Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to heat treat 1095 high carbon steel. Now we're going to use a forge to heat treat the blanks on this particular video, but before we get started I wanted to talk about a couple of common terms. If you start with a preheat treated material like the leaf spring from a car, that's very hard. You're going to want to soften that or anneal it first before working it. To do that, you basically heat it up to non-magnetic and then let it cool at room temperature. Normalizing is basically the same. If you were to forge the knife and beat it into shape, you're going to want to relieve some of that stress before heat treating. You heat it up to non-magnetic and again let it cool at room temperature. Heat treating is a little bit different. Again, you're going to heat it uh, to cherry red or a little bit beyond, then quickly quench it in oil. That will leave the blank very hard, but also very brittle. Tempering will reduce that brittleness. Tempering means basically just putting it in an oven 375 to 400 degrees for about two hours and then letting it cool slowly without ever opening the oven door. So those are the basic terms you have to familiarize yourself with. So there's some things that you're going to need in order to heat treat. Uh, number one, you're going to need a tank to quench the blade in, an oil reservoir. The one that I have is vertical, but it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. As long as it's sturdy, as long as it's steel, it won't tip over and don't use plastic. Uh, it, plastic will melt. You're also going to need a forge or some way of heating up that material. And you're also going to want to heat up the oil. Best case scenario is that oil should be preheated to 120 to 130 degrees. You can do that by heating up a piece of steel and sticking it in the oil and then stirring it up a little bit so that it's the same temperature uh, from top to bottom of the tank. Or you could use an electrical burner. Uh, this one I got on eBay, very inexpensive. If you are going to use a burner, be very careful. Make sure that the oil reservoir is secure and sturdy and is not going to tip over. It's definitely a fire hazard if it did. You're also going to need a digital thermometer with a thermal coupler, which is a, basically a wire that um, is immersed into the oil and it tells you the temperature of the oil. You want to get that oil again to between 120 and 130 degrees. When heat treating, you bring the blank up to just beyond cherry red and you really want to make sure that it's a consistent even heat over the entire blade and then quench it very quickly in the oil. So you're going to need a pair of tongs and you're also going to need a, um, a pair of heat resistant gloves. If you don't have a forge, you can use oxycetylene torches. You could use a coal forge, even a wood fired uh, fired forge will work if you have uh, enough air running through it. There's a variety of ways of bringing the blanks up to proper temperature. If you took a quick look at that, I have a um, tongs and I put a ring around the back end of the tongs, a, a trick that my friend Jason Northgard taught me. That then holds all the pressure on the blank so that I can very easily hold that while, he, um, while heat treating it. I heat treat my blanks by putting the blank uh, into the forge with the edge down. Now I use a two burner forge from Devil Forge and for these small blanks in the you know 6 to 12 inch range I really turn off the back burner. I'm only using a forward burner and I also turn off uh, the back uh, choke which is on the top of the burner. I then move the blank back and forth and side to side. I'm really watching the, the thin area on the, on the blade of the knife as well as the tip. I don't want the tip to overheat and I don't want the edge to overheat. If it starts to get too hot, I can remove it from the forge or I can just move it from one side to the other, a bit out of the direct line of flame from the burner. You want to get this blank up to the point where it is now, no longer magnetic. Now I have a small magnet already mounted on the side on the outside of my furnace. And you really want to take note of the color of the blank. So right now I'm just going to test it on the magnet. 
So at that point, that cherry red, it's non-magnetic. I'm going to put it back in the forge, and I have a mental note of what color it was when I took it out. I want to bring it right back up to that color, and maybe just a shade beyond. Best case scenario is you really want to hold it at that temperature for a good minute before you quench it in oil. And again, you can keep it at that temperature just by moving the blank to the side of the forge, a little bit uh, beyond the direct flame of the burner. And then take it out, quickly quench it in oil. You notice I'm moving that blank up and down in the quench tank. I just want to make sure that there's no difference in temperature of the oil from the top to the bottom. And then I let it cool in there for a while. And, you know, I'll, I'll clip it off to a piece of wire. I'll let it sit in there for a good 10-15 minutes. You definitely want to check the temperature of the oil after uh, you heat treat, especially if you're going to heat treat additional blanks. You're going to have to wait for that oil to cool back to the 120, 130 range before you heat treat any additional blanks. When the blanks come out, they're going to be carbonized. They're going to be black. You can clean that off uh, either with a sander, uh, a surface grinder, or you can soak them in vinegar overnight. That'll make, it, make that carbonization come off a little bit easier. After that is done, the tempering process that we spoke about earlier, 375 to 400 degrees, two hours in the oven, then without opening the oven door, just let them cool overnight. After that, the knives will be hard and hopefully they will no longer be brittle. You can clean up uh, the blade as well as the bevels at this point. You can use the flat platen on a 2x72 grinder. You can use a surface a grinder, a hand sander. You can use a block and, and sandpaper, etc. Uh, if, you have, if you know anybody that has a machine shop, and my nephew, Dennis Lee, does, uh, you can have the hardness checked on a Rockwell tester. The goal here, after tempering, is to have a Rockwell hardness of about 58 on the C-scale. A little bit more than that uh, pre-tempering, uh, pre but right around the, in that 58 range after tempering. Once that's done, you can add your scales and finish the, finish the knife. These are just the blanks that I heat treated on this video. These blanks are all available on uh, www.diyeasycrafts.com. I have a, a nice variety of 1095 high carbon steel blanks available. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please uh, like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd also like to invite you to our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. By all means, join the group and post some pictures of your own builds. Thank you very much.